Hi yogis, welcome to a prop-free yin practice. If you prefer props and you like a bolster, grab it, but you will not necessarily be needing it. So we're gonna start on the back of your body, soles of your feet will be together and your knees will be wide. Rest your hands on your low belly, on your low belly. Organize the shoulders, if it feels kind of groupy and funky in either of your hips, you can grab that leg and just give it a few circles. Sometimes a few bits and bobs in there get caught. And relax. Focusing on your breath, of course. Taking it deep down into the belly. Spreading it right across the chest and the ribs. Setting aside the busyness of the day, whatever time of day it is. And just enjoying the simplicity of being on your mat and these very basic shapes that can sometimes look like they're nothing at all, but oh my gosh, they're everything for the systems of your body, for the inner workings. And to just take time to roll around on the floor, listening to some nice music, unwinding. It's a gift. Let's take another three breaths here. One more breath here. Keep your left leg exactly where it is and just rest your left hand on the front of your left hip. With your right leg, bring it in towards your chest and we're gonna take half happy baby. So bring your right arm inside the knee and go for the outside of the foot. Take the knee wide. You'll see how the sole of my foot is pressing up towards the ceiling. And ideally in half happy baby, your ankle's wider than your knee, your knee is wider than your hip. But none of that really matters, as long as you can feel something into the right hip. You're welcome also, if that's too strong, just to wrap your arm around the back of the leg. It's a really good alternative. It can be helpful. Let's relax in here. We're not here for too, too long. It'll be a minute or so, maybe a little bit longer. About three or four more breaths here.
Keep the right leg where it is, but return the sole of the left foot to the mat, knees high. And then release your right foot. Keep your right leg long and straighten it. And interlace your hands somewhere up the back of your right leg. It can be behind the knee, the ankle, the calf, the thigh. Try and have the shoulders rest on the ground. Take a circle or two into the right foot. Just feel your way in there. And then grow the back of the ankle long by drawing the toes to the face. You're welcome to stay here or slip your left leg long down the mat for something a touch stronger. I quite like it. But if you take it, you don't have to stay for long. You might find that you're one of those people that the right leg gets really shaky, kind of shudders. There's not much you can do about that, so just back off a little bit and it should help, otherwise just kind of allow it to happen and be amused by it. A little longer here, working into the back of the leg, not looking for something too much, not too little. It's like that perfect Goldilocks position. Your left leg is long and straight. Bend your left knee for me, please. Release your right leg, interlace the hands over the shin and pull the knee to the chest. Take a breath in. Exhale, slip your left leg long down the mat. Breath in. Left hand will come to the outside of your right knee. Cross the right leg over the body. If this is too strong, you can have your right arm out to the side, but if this is too strong for a twist, just scoop your left knee up underneath so the knees and thighs are stacked. For me, I'm gonna do that today. I think I prefer it. I'm gonna just see how you like. You can have the bottom leg long and straight or wrap the legs, any other variation. Take a moment to lengthen the tailbone to the heels and close down the eyes. Try not to push and pull your body. Try to organize the shape structure and then just relax around it. Let the weight of the body parts be what holds you in place or indeed can allow you to sink into the shape deeper. We let the body do it on its own. We minimize the risk of, of injuring ourselves by pushing past the point that you should be in. Your body's edge. Take about four more breaths here. And 
last one here. Roll back onto the back of your body. Take the soles of feet together, knees wide, hands to belly. Full circle where we started, or half circle really. Right hand stays to the right hip. Half happy baby with your left leg, please. Again, taking time to position, to choose options, hooking the leg or holding the foot, whatever's most appropriate. And then settle on in. I think it's really nice to practice yin behind closed eyes. We can get super distracted and peek around our room and our house, wherever you are. I'm just learning to be comfortable with the eyes shut in a space, but not sleeping. It could be a really useful kind of entry, nudge towards a meditation. A gaze inwards as opposed to outwards. Spend most of our day being concerned with what's going on outside of us. Of course, it's our life, <laughs> it's our people, it's our work. But in yoga practice, and really in particular in yin practice, you can shift that gaze. And it's worth it. So when we know what's happening inside the body, we can make changes that suit. If we don't even know what's going on in there, how can we, how can we change it? Couple more breaths. And you can bring the sole of the right foot to the mat and let go of the left leg, but take it long and straight to the ceiling. Interlace your hands somewhere down your left leg. Relax the shoulders and the jaw. Take a circle or two into your left foot. Sometimes it can kind of pop and crack a little bit. It's always a bit disconcerting, but normal. And then grow the back of the ankle long and settle in. Welcome, of course, to straighten the right leg at any point. a little bit longer here. Again, maybe the leg gets shuddery. Mine's starting to do that. It feels super strange when that happens. Come back off a little bit.
If your right leg is long, rebend it. And then bend your left knee and interlace your hands over the shin. Take a breath in. Exhale, right leg will go long down your mat. Reach it as long as you can. Breath in. Right hand to the outside of your left leg. Bring it across the body and into your twist of choice. So right leg can be long or scooped up. Broaden through the collarbones. Turn the gaze if it feels good. Lengthen the tailbone. Take any final structural readjustments. So that's at the bones and the actual position. And then let the tissues just drape. Let the weight of the body parts hold you. And let your focus on your breath anchor you mentally here. Notice how you're responding to being still in these shapes. Thoughts will always come and go. It's part of the process, it's part of the human condition. And it's what we do with them that counts. And right now, none of it's really useful. This is a time to just feel in and empty out. Take two more breaths here. One more. And as you breathe in, come back to the back of your body. Land once more, soles together, knees wide. And this time it really is full circle. Take a pause. Bring the knees towards your chest, hug in. Take hold of the back of the legs. Rock your way into a seated cross leg. Left leg in front of right. Left in front of right. Hands to your knees. Sit tall. And then go on and bow forward. Forearms to the ground. Forehead heavy. Breathe a big breath in across the back body. Exhale, 
so completely. Walk the hands back in towards you for your inhale. Let the shoulders drop. And swing your left leg around behind you. Now you can choose a looser 1990 legs and a fold towards the top left corner of your mat. That is actually really nice, so maybe be there. Or of course your other option is your full sleeping swan, yin we call it, uh, yin it sleeping swan, and you might know it better as pigeon pose. This is not as lovely in a yin style without a bolster or a pillow. So if you have that, feel free to slip it under the chest, but you don't need it. We're only gonna be here probably a couple of minutes. Any aggravation in the knee or the hip, do take that first option, dropping to your right thigh and just scooping that left knee in ever so slightly and then folding with a bit of an angle. I think more than any other posture on our mat, it is this swan or pigeon pose that can show up so differently every time. Some days it is super comfortable, we feel happy, there's no aggravation anywhere. Other days, it is not particularly pleasant. It's really dependent on, on what we've been up to, how we've been living our lives. The hips are, the hips are our carriers of everything. So I think it's important with this posture to never really have any expectation. I guess not any of them, but this one in particular. Never have expectation of what it's gonna feel like or look like and just accept it at the time. And then maybe even review, if it's not such a great day for pigeon pose, review why that might be. What have you been doing that's made your hips so tight that this isn't very nice. How can you shift that? Last breath. Be careful and come out slowly. Begin to come to your hands. And just slip your right leg back behind you, coming onto your belly. Take your left arm out wide, T-shape. Left cheek, right fingertips to the mat. Press into your right hand and roll to the left side of your body, a little or a lot. Your right leg will have a mind of its own, so it can be long and straight. I like that, it's pretty gentle. You can bend the knee, knee to ceiling. You can even deliver your right arm around your low back. Let's hang out here for 10 or so breaths.
past breaths here. Take a big breath in. Roll onto your belly. Press your buttocks to your heels for child's pose. Settle down. Maybe the arms are down by the sides. I'd probably choose that. Let's take one more breath here. There's little shifting and shuffling as you can. Come up through your all fours and find your sleeping swan or pigeon on the other side. Left leg will come forward, right back. Left hip if you need, right knee bending in to an angle or straight to mat, more traditional. a little longer here, stay with me. I'm 
it's nice to have few words towards the tail end of the practice. Usually by this point, your focus and presence is pretty set. The breath and the body is feeling good. It is an enjoyable place to be. Start to lift the chest, hands to the mat, or even just forearms. And we're going to slip that left leg long down your mat, coming onto your belly. As you get there, right arm wide, right cheek, left fingertips, and roll right side body, a little or a lot. Organize your legs how feels appropriate, and just rest on in. Remembering this hold isn't super long. It's about five more breaths. A big breath in. Exhale onto the belly. Child's pose, buttocks to heels. Just lift the arms by your sides. Forehead will ground. Begin to rise, finding your way into a seated cross leg, right leg in front of left, right in front of left. Breath in, sit tall. And fold forward on your exhale.
breath in. Stay for the exhale. Walk your hands back, keep your eyes closed. Rest your hands on your knees or cup them in the lap. Grow tall through the crown, let the shoulders drop down. Drop attention to breath. Smooth it out. Let it be deep. And then notice the aliveness of your body beneath your skin. Tingles and fizzes. Take a breath in. Part the lips, side out. Either staying in seated meditation or dropping down onto the back of your body with Shavasana. Take a couple of minutes to let the benefits of all your practices come together and take hold. I'll leave you here on your backs or in your seat. So as always, Thank you so much for practicing with me. It's such a privilege and a pleasure to share this time. Namaste.